Fish. That was old. Oh, that's the way you, uh, what happened? That was, that was the old one? Yeah. Yeah, uh, damn, that. <laughs> Kyrie, how much fun did you guys have out there tonight, and how were you able to pull that one out? Uh, I think it was fun once the game ended. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it was so uh, many high emotions going out there, and I mean, being down 17 in a closeout game isn't something, isn't a position you want to be in, but uh, that's where we found ourselves. So we had to respond the way we've been responding all season, um, just playing hard-nosed basketball on defensive end and getting out in transition and um, just trusting that our pace will get us back in the game. So definitely feels good to get the series done. And, um, you know, now we can reflect on it and see uh, how we improved as players and as a team and as coaching staff and as organization. So I'm appreciative of it. What can you say about P.J.? He was scoreless through the first three quarters and then nine points there in the, in the fourth Yeah, I don't, think it uh, <laughs> I don't think it mattered to P.J. too much. I, I think he was just waiting for his moment, and he's played well majority of the series. So uh, we had some confidence in him that eventually he would make some big-time shots, and i um, grateful that he knocked them down, man. That's just pure confidence and belief. This question is for both of you. Um, you guys have been down before in the Clippers series, and now tonight just – what makes this group so resilient that you're able to come back and overcome a large deficit? Uh, I think we just stay together. We always talk uh, on the bench, stay together, uh, positive energy. And today was a pure, pure example of it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Good answer. Uh, question, for, question for Kyrie. End of the game, you finish up your ESPN interview. You give your shoes to the fan. I think you, uh, I think you got your daughter and you're walking off. All the fans are surrounding you, phones out, cheering you on. I'm just curious, how special are those moments to you in your career? Uh, I mean, you know, just that whole walk off, you know, hugging my family and then going and hugging some more of my family in the locker room, everybody cheering for each other. And I had to make an impromptu speech and I was doing my best not to let some tears come down from my eyes because it feels uh, like it's been a long time coming, just being back in this position, getting back to the, uh, you know, finals or the conference finals. Uh, it was just a long way back, you know, and I uh, look back at uh, parts of my career where I took it for granted, just getting to the conference finals, on, you know, for three years straight and then not getting back for a little bit, you know, to weigh on you as a as a competitor. So uh, I'm grateful that I had these guys beside me and kept feeding me confidence and, um, you know, kept doing the little things for one another. And I think that's what, um, you know, made the celebration feel that much more, that much better, uh, you know. So when I get a a chance to hug on my family after the game, and you just realize that it is just a game, it means a lot to us. We all love it, and that's the connector. But once the buzzer goes off, then um, you know we're back to regular life, and we can still celebrate the things that we're accomplishing. For for either or both of you guys, but um, you know, you guys have been talking about Derek Lively, you know, all season. How impressed you are with him. Uh, has has he ever stopped impressing you, especially on a night like tonight? Uh, no, it was amazing. I see here plus 25, 26. In a playoff game, it's it's insane, man. Uh, he's doing this with while being a rookie. Uh, he has an unbelievable potential. Uh, I'm just glad the Mavs drafted him. <laughs> you have Very you happy. Do no. I'm about Duke. In the series win as well. Every um, other day or so, you're tweeting out, tribes stay together no matter what. And that, that's a message that resonates even outside of basketball. What would you say to those young kids that are trying to find their tribe and, you know, how to do, do that importantly? Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would say, you know, when I tweet those things, it's, it's not just for, you know, basketball fandom or just my family at home or family internationally. I think it's just for humanity in general. And um, I know how big this platform is. Uh, I know I don't say this arrogantly, but I know how big my presence is alongside my teammates whenever we go out and represent our respective countries, our ethnicities, our nationalities, our cultures. You know, we're, we're bigger than basketball players here. We understand that. But when we go out and compete, um, you know, whether we win or lose, people take those emotions <laughs> home with them. And so I just try, try my best to uh, send out a, a peaceful tweet. Uh, to let everybody know, just don't panic, <laughs> stay poised, and uh, we'll get back on the winning on winning track. And um, when I say winning track, as well applied to basketball, I'm really applying to life. You know, just stay together, keep seeking the truth, and keep God first. That's always been the 
the mentality, you know, so I love to share that, uh, especially through a tough series like this where everybody's wondering <laughs> what are these tweets coming from? What are they about? And, you know, some people are going to dissect them, but it's, it's really just about um, the young kids at home understanding that they have an uh, older generational leader that's looking out for them and letting them know, hey, this is, this is bigger than the game itself. Just stay together, stay poised, and keep enjoying life, man. The game goes on. Oh, Luca, if you got that mic fixed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the long well, answer. Could you, could you, uh, just uh, the rebounding was awesome, uh, and uh, generally speaking, but in particular the one the offensive rebound PJ got, and I think he kicked it out to you. Uh, just talk about hit the twenty-seven second chance points and all. You know, there's the oh, huge yeah. rebound. I mean, we're, yeah, twenty-seven is amazing. It means our passion and our energy was. Was at the high level. Uh, everybody was concentrated. Uh, we know. We said at the halftime, we're not going back to OKC, so that's what we did. We stayed together, uh, as I always say, uh, and playing with energy. Uh, that rebound, the PJ guy, I remember. And then I draw, and he hit the three. Uh, it was a huge moment in the game. It was a momentum change, and uh, it was very, very huge uh, at the end of the game. Luca, you obviously shot the ball well these last couple games, but for a lot of the series, it was a struggle for you to get in your normal kind of groove. What's it mean to you for you guys to be able to win a series, you know, when it was a, a, a struggle for much of it for you? I mean, we won the series. That's what it matters in the end. Uh, we won 4-2, uh, being uh, not home. We didn't have home advantage, which is, which is great. And, I mean, it's great that we won. Uh, but... Just, you know, struggle is going to come. Uh, you got to stay positive and keep hoping, you know. You can impact the game other ways, uh, not just by shooting poor or good. And uh, Kyrie, what was the gist of your impromptu speech post game? Oh. What was the gist of You said you made an impromptu speech in the locker room. What was the gist I'm of I'm sure it? it'll be on social media or something like that, man. You know. <laughs> so I don't think there's any more privacy to it. But, uh, you know, my teammates know just – Again, I was trying to hold back the emotions just because of how hard and tough this series was. And uh, I think we really got to appreciate each other's talents and skill sets and, and most importantly, our, our will. Um, got a lot of guys that love to compete, a lot of guys that want to see each other do well and are willing to sacrifice and do the little things in order to get wins. So I think we're continuing to prove that. Um, obviously, the job's not finished, but it uh, feels good to be in the conference finals, to be you know, the last four remaining teams, right, eventually just – you don't want to take those moments for granted because no guarantee that you get back. So, Luca, there's not many guys left over here. There's not many guys left on the roster that was with you the last time you made this stage. They go out last year and get Kyrie. Then the front office recognizes they've got two all-star guards in their primes and they go out and throw two first-round picks to really just fortify this group. How much has it meant to you to see this organization continue to add pieces to really support someone like yourself? Big time. Uh, you can see this group uh, has been together for like five months. Uh, like I say, you know, we're capable of more and more, I think. Uh, but just a big time, big time trades, big time uh, adjustment and keep bringing them. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm tired, man. <laughs> So this is a question for both of y'all, Luca, Kyrie. Y'all saw the doubters that were saying that y'all wouldn't work. Kyrie, a couple months ago, you <laughs> talked about the D grade that ESPN gave y'all. Could y'all talk about just, D? yeah, they gave him a D rating for the trade from the Nets. So could, could y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I wanted to ask y'all, how, it, into All -Star game to how does it feel player. to prove the doubters wrong? <laughs> uh, I don't think we care. Uh, we enjoy playing with each other. Uh, we enjoy playing with this team, so uh, I don't, we don't really care what other people have to say. Along those same lines, Luca, as a brother and as a teammate, what does Kyrie mean to you? Kyrie, as a as a teammate and a brother, what does Luca mean to you? Oh, we're getting emotional now. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't talk about it. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, man. Yeah, because you get the long speeches. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, big time, man. When he came, uh, nothing but supportive of everything I did, everything we did. Uh, but just uh, it helped me mature a lot. I uh, realized uh, to see the game in a different way. And obviously in the court, it's amazing to play with a guy like him. Uh, like I said, just go out, there, go out there, enjoy. And the leader he's been for us, uh, not just for me, but for us, he's been amazing. Always positive energy. Yeah, I, I just... 
I think this guy next to me has pushed me to uh, continue to work on my game and continue to uh, develop as, as a young leader. And I think the big word that we both uh, can agree on is just maturity. Um, coming into Dallas, I was dealing with a lot mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and uh, they embraced me with open arms. You know, I don't have a perfect journey, so coming into this environment, I, I was unsure how we were going to work out on the court, but off the court, I knew eventually that I would get him to open up. And this guy's a big teddy bear at times off the court, big competitor. Okay, I'll say a teddy bear that likes to compete. You know, he's still ducking me in dominoes, but, you know, I think uh, at times, um, you know, I just have to sit back and marvel at his talent and um, his ability to get outside his comfort zone. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy watching him um, be a father. I enjoy watching him, you know, develop as a person first and then the basketball stuff will take care of it. We all know how skilled he is. We all know his numbers and stuff like that. But I want to be a teammate and a brother next to him that helps him grow as a man and helps him achieve the things that he wants to achieve. And I know he feels the same way. So um, the mission is still the same for us. And when we step on that court, we enjoy competing with each other. And the times that you guys don't get to see is the t you know, times we get to compete against each other on the court in practice, which we just laugh and joke and we work out together. And you know, we know that this, this dream of ours started when we were a kid. So to connect like this on this level, I'm 32. You know, he's a young 25, 26, you know. 24. So he's still growing. No, 25. He's 25, 26, 27. 20. The beard makes him older, so. But no, he's just a good kid, man. Good good human being, good young man. Look, I wonder if there's anything that you could have maybe taken from the 2022 run, because when you guys reached the conference finals, it had been the first time for the franchise in 11 years. It seemed like there was a sense of happy to be here. Do you think there's anything that maybe you can take from, and that is a bigger stage, from playing in that conference finals that you can use this time around? I mean, yeah. I mean, we played the Warriors, I remember. That was tough. That was a tough run. Uh, I think we could have won the game two there. Uh, we kind of got out of the, out of our way. You know, we kind of relaxed. Uh, but it was tough playing against the Warriors, always in the on the move, uh, but always say play, I mean, think in the present, you know, don't think in the past. So uh, today is about today's game uh, and tomorrow we'll think about conference finals when we know when, who we play. But today I think we should all enjoy it because uh, this was, I, I would say, a really hard series. Good. Right. Kyrie, Kyrie um, I know you talked a little bit to, to Tim about you know your place and your generation, how you're one of the last stars left in the playoffs. For Luca to now be in two conference finals in, in three old. years. I'm old. <laughs> what, is it, what does it say about his place in this generation, this new generation? Luca? Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I talked about it, just this younger generation and um, you know how they have no fear. Um, you know, they don't see the OG superstars as, as guys that they look up to as much anymore. They, they want to kill our records. They, they want to <laughs> they want to kill us every time they get on the court. And uh, that was the, you know, the first thing I noticed about Luca is that he just had no fear going against the best of the world. And he, he always walks around like he's the best player in the world. And um, I think that's the confidence of a champion. That's where it starts. And, you know, we want to continue to. Hey, it's OK, Elo. Um, you know, we just want to continue to give each other that confidence and, um, you know, as we watch them grow, just give them that grace. You know, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to fail at the biggest stage. He's done that already, making it to the Western Conference Finals. And now he has a veteran next to him, a few veterans next to him. It's a different run. Um, I think that team in 2022, I, I have a lot of respect for that team. They were happy to be there, but I, I think he knows our approach is job's not finished and we got to get back to work after we get rest and we got to get back on that court, you know, and continue to condition ourselves mentally and physically and just get prepared. Uh, so we, we know the goal that we have at hand. We don't have to overspeak it, but we know how to put it into existence, and that's just putting in the work. Yes, uh, right here for both of you. Can you give me one word to describe what this comeback was? And can you also just talk about Jason Kidd's ability in coaching that helped you win this series? Uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, I would say domination. Yeah. And then with, with, one, with Coach Kidd, uh, yeah, he, he makes our jobs a lot easier. Um, we look over to him during uh, some crucial times, tough times throughout the game. And uh, he just has that point guard's mentality where he just wants to stay 
us to stay poised and continue to make the right decisions, but also stay aggressive. You don't really see him you know, getting mad at the shots that Luka takes or the shots that I take. He just wants us to continue to push the basketball, uh, get into our offense, and get back on defense and do the right things. Um, we've built an identity on being honest uh, with each other as well. So I got to give credit to that guy. He shows a lot of love. He keeps us positive, and um, he sh he's a straight shooter. Thank you. Come on, Yellow. Thank you. All right, time for